Let's now uncomment section 9 and see what we should do to make it work. Select and control forward slash. Okay, you can see that we have an assignment here. And on the left hand side, we're trying to declare a variable called BB of type birthday book. And this should be a class, but currently it cannot be resolved to be a type. So we have to create this class called birthday book. And also, we are trying to, on the right hand side, cre uh, to create a new object of type birthday book. So that means we need a constructor for the class birthday book. And the constructor takes no parameters. Okay, so we can do these two things at one go. And these two compile time errors should go away. But we might have more errors after that. We'll see. Okay, let's now create a new class called birthday book. New and then class birthday book. Okay. After creating this class, you can see that the left hand side, this type now exists. But now we have to make sure we also define that constructor there explicitly. Okay. So now let's go there and then let's define that public and then birthday book. By default, you just do nothing, but we'll add more things as we need to. And now you can go back here. You can see that we're trying to call two methods here on the type on the variable BB, which is of type birthday book, which means these two methods should be defined in the birthday book class. So now you can see get number of entries. So this suggests it should be a number, right? So that should be some integer. And this one over here, the get entries, you can see that get entries over there, we also say dot length. So this means get entries should return an array. Okay, so we actually have talked about this kind of pattern here uh, a few times already in the previous lectures. So you should really review those lectures. But for this tutorial here, we'll just show you the solution. And the solution pattern follows just what we taught uh, before. Okay, so now what we need is we should go to the birthday book and let's define the necessary attributes over there. Okay, so we have private entry array. Let's call it entries. And also we have an integer called number of entries. So this means the number of entries. And also it has a second purpose, which means the index for the next entry to be stored. Okay. So this is something we have done uh, a few times already up to now. So let's do that quickly. So now we have basically uh, to initialize, we have to assume certain uh, maximum capacity. If you refer back to the, uh, uh, the notes over here, you can see that our initial assumption was, let me just bring you back to the uh, PDF. We said that over there, each birthday book may store up to 10 entries. So now the maximum capacity should just be 10. So let's go back to, let's just go back and then we'll go back to Eclipse. So just stay in the expected output and now we're doing number nine, which is here. Okay, initially we just have number of entries, zero, and then let's go back here. So let's define some constant here. Private final maximum capacity and just 10, okay? Of course, later on, if we want to change the maximum capacity, we only have to come here to change it, okay? Final, and that's an integer, okay? Now, let's do the following. We can do entry to assign to new entry and the maximum capacity, whatever it is. At this mo uh, in this case, it's uh, simply just 10. And this lines up uh, addition as kind of optional. You can either say NOE is assigned to zero. Otherwise, you, if you leave this out, the NOE, because that's an integer, you will just get the default value of zero anyway. So it's completely up to you. I'll just leave that to be explicit and then make sure it's spelled correctly. Okay. And then after this, you can see that if you go back there, what we need is we need get number of entries and get entries, okay? 
Since we have an array over here, so every time when we're adding a new entry there, we have to increment the NOE uh, accordingly, which is this NOE tells us to, to know how many entries we actually have, okay? So let's say, if you say, first of all, let's get an easy one. Public integer get number of entries. This one here is very easy. We can simply return NOE. So NOE corresponds to exactly how many entries there are in the uh, array, in the uh, birthday book. And there's this one here, we can say as we, let you as a reminder here, because over here we say bb dot entries, how should we figure out the return type? Because the return type dot length, dot length is a special uh, attributes for the primitive array in Java. So we know that this should return an array of entries. So now if you go there, it's gonna be public entry get entries, okay? I should make sure I type correctly get entries, okay? So that's an array. So now what should we return? Let's just do the, uh, uh, as far as section nine is concerned, we can just return zero, for example. However, let's be a little bit more complete just the first time around so we can save some job for later. What should we return? A common mistake is simply to return entries. I can tell you that this is wrong. Think about why this is wrong. Let's say initially we call the constructor for the birthday book. So we initialize an entries array, which is an array of size 10. And remember, initially all the slots will store only now references. It's an array of 10 nouns. If we simply say get entries and return that array there, what we will get is bb.getEntries is going to return an array of size 10. And that length will give us 10. However, if you see the expected output over there, the number of entries should be zero, not 10, okay? So we're gonna be careful here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say, depending on the current value of NOE, we're going to return an array of the according length, okay? This is what we should do. Okay, first of all, you should know that writing return entries is simply just wrong, okay? So now what we should do is we should say, um, entry, so this will be the array to return. I would just say entries, ES, is new entry over here, and we should give a size, then the size should be exactly just NOE. NOE can be zero, in which case just empty array, or it can be up to 10, okay? Eventually, we're gonna return ES, and then we can say, write a for loop, integer i, zero, i less than, and another common mistake is to say entries.length and then I plus plus. And the problem for this one is, if you say I is less than entries the length, what's entries the length? Entries the length was determined by when we first initial, initialized the object, which is initialized to be of size maximum cap capacity 10. So this one here is always going to, going to be 10. In that case, it is not good because think about what's gonna happen. In the very beginning, all the 10 slots in the array are nulls. And if you try to go to entries at position zero at position one, it will just give you null. What's the use of getting a null slot, right? So we should really try to avoid getting the null slots. So what we should have done is, rather than saying entries the length, we should really say um, NOE. So let's say, let's think about this. Initially, NOE is gonna be zero, which means no entries in the uh, array, uh, in the birthday book. In that case, I is assigned to zero, I less than zero, which would just be false, which means we're going to skip the entire loop and then return the empty array. This is okay. That's definitely acceptable for the uh, initial birthday book, which is empty. So what we should do is every time, if we ever get a chance to enter the loop, we're going to say entry E is the current entries we are looking at, at position I, and then we can and then we can now assign that into the uh, ES, which is the thing we're gonna return. Okay? It's assigned to E. Okay. Of course, if you like, you can simply say ES at position I is assigned to this expression here. That's also fine. Okay? 
Okay, let me just uh, tell you what a common mistake is. Common mistake is simply return entries. That's not good. And also the common mistake over here is that you say i is less than entries.length because in both cases you might just return something that will include nulls you should always avoid always eliminates all the null values in your result okay so now let's go back there and see if this will satisfy everything i believe you will let's see execute that you will see number of entries will be zero and also the size of the array is also zero okay so now we're done with this particular section nine let's convert this into a test case let's go to test over here and now we have add test public and then void test 09 and over here we can paste the test case over here so now we're going to convert the uh, print statement into assertion. Assert equals bb dot get number of entries is expected to be zero over here, and also we have assert equals, and over here we have the length of get entries should be also zero. Okay, that's what we have. Now let's uh, run the test. So now everything passed. So, so far we have built 10 test cases and all of them passed.